happens now. Yeah. Here, Alex. I wanted to ask about uh, a comment uh, Senator Lindsey Graham made this morning. Uh, he said it was wrong that there's no good military option regarding North Korea. He said there is a military option to destroy North Korea's program and North Korea itself. Uh, would the White House be supportive of that, relief. that option? I'm sorry? Would the White House be supportive of that option to destroy North Korea's Just program and North Korea like itself? Somebody lost for those directions. <laughs> Sorry, I just keep hearing somebody's phone uh, talking or something. Said, yeah, it's very distracting. The only good military option against North Korea is to destroy North Korea's program and North Korea itself. Look, the president uh, obviously has been very outspoken about how he feels about North Korea. We're weighing all options, keeping all options on the table. And as we've said many times before, we're not going to broadcast what uh, we're going to do and, until that happens. I'm sorry. So destroying the country, like Lindsey Graham said, is an option. Look, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying, the president has been very outspoken about the need to stop North Korea. We've been very focused on stopping the nuclear program, stopping the missiles, stopping the aggression. That still continues to be the focus, and we're keeping those all options on the table in order to do that. Yeah. Yeah, um, according to the Washington Post, the president tried to change the narrative of what went down in uh, John Junior's meeting with the Russian lawyer. Can you address that story and tell us, did the president really try to do that? Look, uh, the statement that Don Jr. issued is true. There's no inaccuracy in the statement. The president weighed in as any father would based on the limited information that he had. Uh, this is all discussion, frankly, of no consequence. There was no follow-up. It was disclosed to the proper parties, which is how the New York Times found out about it to begin with. The Democrats want to continue to use this as a PR stunt and are doing everything they can to keep this story alive and in the papers every single day. The president, the American people, they voted America first, not Russia first, and that's the focus of our administration. Sir, can, you, John? can you clarify the degree to which the president waited? Uh, he didn't. He certainly didn't dictate, but you know, he, like I said, he weighed in, offered suggestion, like any father would do. Did he not know what the Stephen? intelligence was? Uh, I will follow up on that. Was he aware at the time that uh, Don Jr. had had a meeting that was based on the pretext that uh, he would be promised information that was negative about Hillary Clinton when he suggested that? the statement only say that the meeting was primarily about Russian adoption policy? Like I said, the statement that was issued was true and there were no inaccuracies in the statement. I think what the bigger question is, everybody wants to try to make this some story about misleading. The only thing I see misleading is a year's worth of stories that have been fueling a false narrative about this Russia collusion and based on a phony scandal based on anonymous sources. And I, I think that is, if we're going to talk about misleading, that's the only thing misleading I see in this entire process. I would like you guys are focused. Uh, on a meeting that Don Jr. had no consequence uh, when the Democrats actually colluded with a foreign government like Ukraine. The Democrat-linked firm Fusion GPS actually took money from the Russian government while it created the phony dossier that's been the basis for all of the Russia scandal fake news. And if you want to talk further about a relationship with Ro Russia, look no further than the Clintons, as we've said time and time again. Bill Clinton was paid half a million dollars to give a speech to a Russian bank and was personally thanked by Putin for it. Hillary Clinton allowed one-fifth of America's uranium to reserve to be sold to a Russian firm whose investors were Clinton Foundation donors and the Clinton campaign chairman's brother lobbied against sanctions on Russia's largest bank and failed to report it. If you guys want to talk about having relations, which you seem obsessed with doing, look no further than there. If you want to talk about somebody who's actually been tough on Russia, look at President Trump. He wants more fracking more coal, more energy, a stronger military, a stronger defense. Those things aren't good for Russia. I think the distinctions are very clear, and you guys want to create a narrative that just doesn't exist. Sarah, why hey, guys. Sarah, why did the president sign the Russia bill? Glenn, Sarah, why did the president sign the Russia bill? Glenn, go ahead. Sorry. Sarah, a, a, sort of a follow-up on what you were talking about, our obsession with Russia and the responsibility laying with the Clintons. There's a report out today based on a lawsuit that was filed it says that Sean Spicer met with a campaign donor and a journalist from Fox News where they were pushing around this story that Seth Rich, this low-ranking DNC staffer who was murdered, was perhaps the one uh, responsible for the WikiLeaks breach. Two questions. Sean put out a statement. He said it was just a brief meeting. He said the guy didn't know the president. The lawsuit alleges that the president knew about it and had an influence on the story. Did the president know about the story pre-publication and did he have an influence on the way the story was written? 
The president had no knowledge of the story, and it's completely untrue that he or the White House involvement in the story. Uh, and beyond that, this is ongoing litigation, and I'd refer you to the actual parties involved, which aren't the White House. Well, does it disturb you that the, the press secretary for the president of the United States, you just gave this incredibly passionate pushback on us for focusing on Russia. Does it disturb you, you just sped right past this, does it disturb you that there is an allegation out there in a lawsuit, and Sean Spicer admitted meeting with these two individuals, that this was discussed in your White House? That this he met with members series. of the media. I don't find that to be a strange thing. You guys pushing, are all members of the media. He was pushing a story that was later retracted because it was false. He met with that reporter, and he met with a campaign donor. Does it disturb you? Does it say anything about this White House that you would entertain that kind of story? It doesn't bother me that the press secretary would take a meeting with somebody involved in the media about a story. None of that was disclosed. They had a conversation, and that was the end of it. Uh, you guys come to us with stories all day. I've taken meetings with the majority of the people in this room. I don't always know the nature of the story of what you're coming to talk to me about, but it's my job to talk to you, to listen, and I'm responding. The president didn't have knowledge of the story. The White House didn't have any involvement in the story. And beyond that, it's ongoing litigation that doesn't involve anybody in the building. And so I'd refer you to the parties that it does. I've got two questions for you, please. I want to follow up on something you said yesterday. Uh, after my first question, you were on that flight back uh, from the G20. Did you advise the president to be truthful in that statement that he was helping? I wasn't part of a conversation regarding the state. We're not in the room at the time. Or in well, the I, area at the time. I, I was in the air. I was on the plane, but I wasn't part of the conversation, so I, I can't speak to anything beyond that part. Yesterday, you said that the president was joking about uh, his comments, putting suspects' heads, telling police officers they shouldn't cover their heads and putting them in the car. Was he making a joke about police brutality? Not at all. I think you guys are jumping uh, and trying to make something out of nothing. He was simply making a comment, making a joke, and it was nothing more than that. Sarah, 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 so Sarah. Funny. Funny should he that, apologize Sarah, that for that issue, joke? On that same issue, the head of the DEA wrote immediately after the president made those remarks to officers of the DEA, telling them to disregard them and saying he had an obligation to speak up when something wrong happened. It wasn't a directive. It was a joke. There's a very Seriously, big difference. So why, why was that not clear? Bolivia? Sarah, has the president signed the Russia and North Korea Iran sanctions bill? I'm sorry, has he signed it? Yes. He has not, but as we put out a statement earlier this week, he will, and we'll let you know uh, when the details and final what's, what's plan. The, what's the delay? Coming. What's the delay here? He, you guys have had this since Friday. What, what's holding him back? It's always, there's nothing holding him back. There's a review process, a legal process. They're going through that, and he'll sign the bill, and we'll let you guys know. Margaret. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, uh, I have two questions. The first is there's a really interesting story out uh, just before the briefing began by Defense One talking about uh, Air Force One, and it says that uh, the U.S. Air Force has found an alternative uh, to get the price down as President Trump wanted, and that was to buy a pair of Boeing 747 jetliners that were abandoned by a bankrupt Russian airline. Uh, can you verify the accuracy of the story? Do you know if that's correct? I can at this time. It's something I'd have to check okay. into and get back to you. Okay. And then I also wanted just sort of an update on uh, the new Chief of Staff, General Kelly. Can you talk to us sort of in broad strokes about the calls and outreach that he's made so far, uh, leadership in Congress, folks outside of Congress, uh, any governors, and that sort of thing. Just can you talk to us broadly about uh, the message that he's sending and the people that he's talking to both inside and outside of the administration? Uh, I know he's spoken to a number of members of Congress, uh, as well as a large number of individuals within the staff. He's taking time uh, to get to know everyone here in the building that he hasn't met previously through his other role and working through uh, setting up you know, new processes and kind of setting the tone, I think, for a White House uh, that under his leadership will be very focused on the president's agenda as we've been doing the last six months we're going to continue on that track and we're going to do that uh under general kelly and we're very excited to work alongside him in that process yeah. Hallie. About the president's agenda um and, and i'm obviously sitting here and i heard you list off a, a list of reasons of why you think that the media should be focusing on democrats not the president and not to belabor an obvious point, but Hillary Clinton is certainly not in the Oval Office, Donald Trump is. And there seems to be a trust deficit that is being created with some on Capitol Hill. And I want to tell you what Lindsey Graham said this morning on the Today Show. That he says, it was a, if this is true, this Washington Post reporting, it was a bad decision by the president, which will make us ask more questions. When you get caught in a lie about one thing, it makes it hard to say, we'll just let the other stuff go. Is this what is hurting the president's legislative agenda, this credibility issue on the House? Uh, I think what's hurting the legislative agenda is Congress's inability to get things passed. 
can you elaborate ahead. on that a little sure. bit, Sarah? Because uh, clearly there is a, a concern from some Republicans that the president is not always being as truthful as he could be. How does he plan to address that? Uh, I, I think by being truthful and transparent as he has every single day. Go ahead. Thank you, Sarah. I'd like to return to North Korea. Um, with North Korea continuing to escalate nuclear t tensions, can we expect any actions from the administration to ratchet up pressure um, of actions on China? Uh, as we've said, we're not going to broadcast movements on things like that before they take place. But, you know, we're going to continue to work with our allies, continue to work with our partners. And again, the goals are to stop the nuclear program, stop the missiles, stop the aggression. With North Korea, we're going to continue looking at the best options and ways to accomplish that. And then, can you say what some of those options might be? Uh, not at this time. John? Sorry, John Gizzi, you had your hand up when I first went back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Happy to go to somebody else named John. <laughs> you said yesterday that, I think you said yesterday, that there would be no reshuffle in the cabinet, meaning General Sessions would not move over to the Homeland Security. Is that correct? Correct. And does that also mean that Secretary of State Chris Kovac, the Vice Chairman of the President's Commission on Electoral Integrity, would stay in his position and not be considered Homeland Security. I'm not aware of any movements for him, uh, but as always, we have a personnel announcement. I'd be happy to share it with you. Yeah. John Decker? Thanks. Since we're in the Johns, I'll take Thank that. you, Sarah. I was hoping, just to follow up on North Korea, I hope you could clarify the administration's message that it has for North Korea. The other day, the president said, uh, when asked about North Korea, we will take care of them, we will take care of everything. And a little bit uh, ago, the Secretary of State uh, Secretary of State Tillerson said that the U.S. is trying to convince North Korea that the U.S. is not your enemy. Uh, so which one is it? Uh, is the president focused on North Korea as an adversary, or is Secretary Tillerson correct that the U.S. is trying to send this message that the U.S. is not North Korea's enemy? Look, like I just said a few minutes ago, the big priorities here, uh, which we've laid out, I think this is the third or fourth time I've done it just today, is to stop the nuclear program, stop the missiles, stop the aggression. That's what we're focused on uh, in regards to North Korea, and we're going to continue pushing on that, continue working with our allies and partners to accomplish are that, they, and do an what is necessary to achieve it. Are they an adversary? Does the, does the President Look, I think, I, I think in some ways they get to decide by the actions that they take. Uh, if they want to stop their nuclear program, stop the game, stop the missiles, stop the aggression, then I think we may be able to find ways to move forward. But those are the priorities of this administration. Sarah. Dave. Sarah, thanks. Um, Secretary Mnuchin had a meeting on the Hill this morning with uh, Senate leaders about the debt ceiling. Uh, apparently, according to reports, they didn't get anywhere. Uh, obviously, this has the potential to affect the stock market rally that the president is so pleased with. I think the have, whole country is pleased yes, with Yes, that's true. Do you have any reason to believe at this point that you're going to get the debt ceiling issue done by the end of September? Uh, look, to ensure that we have robust economic growth and promote fiscal discipline, the Trump administration believes it's important to raise the deal, set debt ceiling as soon as possible. Over the past two decades, members of Congress and presidents from both parties have raised the debt ceiling 15 times, and we look forward to working with Congress to ensure the full faith and credit of the United States government. Sarah. April. Thank you. Um, Since you said my name so politely. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. So Somewhat sarcastic. Mm -hmm. Me being sarcastic? No, never. Go ahead, April. All right. Um, Sarah, when it comes to this joke that the president said um, Friday, you have many organizations to include police organizations, the NAACP, and the American Citizenship that is upset about this. Could there be an apology from the president? And what does he view as reasonable when he's not joking when it comes to use of force from police? I would have to ask on that specific question. But do you think that the president is remorseful for what he said because of the outcry from Friday? I think the president supports uh, our law enforcement and he supports the protection of the citizens of this country and he wants to empower our law enforcement to be able to do their job. I don't think there's anything beyond that. Zeke. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, thanks, Sarah. First, uh, following up on uh, Olivier's question, uh, you mentioned that there's a legal review of the, this legislation, but the White House has already said that the president will sign it. So what, what is the nature of that review? If, presumably there is some review before putting out that statement. 
uh, as with every uh, very particularly complex piece of legislation like this is, there's a legal review and once we sign that, we'll work through and put more of the details of that process out. And separately, uh, one more for, uh, for you. Uh, last month, the president had delivered a, a, a warning to Congress a couple of times not to take vacation in August. What is the status of the president's August plans? Does he plan to leave Washington for how long? And what will he be doing during that time frame? We'll continue to keep you guys updated on his August schedule as those details are finalized. Thanks, um, the Coast Guard Commandant also said he won't turn his back on transgender troops which would seem to preclude adhering to the President's directive on Twitter. Um, does the White House consider that he's refusing to uh, follow an order? Uh, I haven't heard those comments or had a chance to speak with any about it, but I know that the goal is to work with all of the uh, relevant departments, primarily the Department of Defense, to lawfully implement that new policy. Sarah, 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 Sarah you just told April that uh, you, you would have to ask the president if uh, an apology would be appropriate. Are you saying you will ask him and get back to us? No, I said I would have to in order to answer that question. Yeah, well, could you please? Could I'll let you know you? if I do. Also, on, John, on uh, General Kelly, you said yesterday that everybody's now reporting to the president through him. Is that an accurate characterization? Right, like I said, that uh, General Kelly has full authority so does that in the mean White nobody House. Nobody can wander into the White House on their own. Is he going to post somebody outside the Oval Office? I don't think anybody can wander into the White House on Excuse their own me, without into the Secret Oval Service. Office, into the Oval Office. Can his daughter, can his son in law, can Steve Bannon wander into the Oval Office? And I don't talk think to anybody just the... wanders into the Oval Office. Look, this is the, the White House. He's the President of the United States of America, and uh, there are processes but it's and formal here normally right uh, i mean people talk to him they don't wait to get approval to talk to him look general kelly is going to work with the entire team as he's been doing over the last couple of days he's done a great job of sitting down and talking to individuals about the needs that they have the conversations and putting a structure in place there's nothing abnormal Can about that staff talk to the president without the approval of general kelly uh, I, I don't know that I would say approval is the correct word, but um, I, I certainly don't think it's like we're getting permission slips signed. But I do think that there is something to having uh, a structured process in order um, just to make things run more smoothly at the White House. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah what's the president's reaction to two opposition leaders being Sorry, killed in I, Venezuela? Can you say that again? <laughs> what, what is the president's reaction to the two opposition leaders being jailed in Venezuela now after the sanctions from yesterday? Uh, uh, overnight, the regime of the Venezuelan dictator Maduro detained uh, two leading opposition figures following its outrageous seizure of power through sham elections this weekend. Uh, the vice president spoke with Mr. Lopez just last week, and uh, he and Mr. Leda's Ma are political prisoners held unjustly by the Maduro regime. The United States condemns the actions of the Maduro dictatorship, and we hold Maduro personally responsible for the health and safety of both men and any other seized by his dictatorship. Is the president already considering increasing the sanctions and perhaps going after the oil exports? Again, I'm not going to broadcast. As Secretary Mnuchin said yesterday, we'll consider all options and keep you guys updated. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. On health care, uh, you said earlier that the, the, what's keeping the president's agenda from going is, is Congress and their votes. Um, the president has said he wants to see uh, health care done before anything else, and yet that's not the message we've seen from the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, in the last few days. It, uh, can you explain the discrepancy between the president and senior Republican leadership on the Hill when it comes to what should be done next? As we've said before, we can do a lot of different things at one time. We're continuing to focus. First. We're continuing to try to push a, a new health care system. We know that Obamacare is failing. We know that inaction is simply not okay. We want to continue to make that a priority. We want to work with Congress to do that. We're gonna, we may look for other question. ways to improve health care in the meantime. We're also continuing to focus on tax reform. We've been doing tax reform listening sessions for the last month. We've been having, we've had countless meetings with members of Congress, other organizations, talking about tax reform, infrastructure. We're gonna to continue to focus on all of those priorities and move them forward. Will the president support Congress taking CSR payments out of his hands? There's been some suggestion, again, among senior Republicans that this is appropriate to do, given the president's threats to stop these payments. They're saying this should be taken out of the executive branch. Uh, I'd have to get back to you on that. Probably. Because this is something that's being discussed pretty aggressively on Capitol Hill. John Thune sure. has talked about it. Orrin Hatch has I'm talked about it. I'm happy to get it. back to you. Mitch McConnell, thanks. Yep.
Peter. Uh, very quickly on Seth Rich. Does the president believe the predicate of that original Fox News reporting that Seth Rich was responsible for the release of